NASA's long-lost space plane might finally have a shot at flying. And surprisingly, the company that once beat it to orbit may now be the one to save it. We're talking about Dream Chaser, Sierra Space's sleek, shuttle-style space plane that's been grounded since its inception back in 2004. Not totally because it's not ready, not because it can't fly, but because the rocket is booked on, still isn't available for it yet. While more reliable launch options like SpaceX's Falcon 9 are flying almost every week, Dream Chaser's unique design just doesn't quite fit until now. A new solution is on the horizon. And yes, it comes from SpaceX. Could this be the moment that wakes Dream Chaser from its 20-year slumber? In this episode of Tech Map, we break down how one of the most powerful rockets in the world might be the key to getting Dream Chaser off the ground, literally. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser is shaping up to be a major player in America's commercial space sector. NASA's inclusion of the Dream Chaser as part of its International Space Station cargo fleet, alongside Orbital Science's Cygnus and SpaceX's Dragon, adds much-needed redundancy and variety. This becomes even more critical today as many experts voice growing concerns about NASA relying too heavily on SpaceX. Looking ahead when the crewed version of Dream Chaser eventually launches, it could serve as a viable backup for SpaceX's Starship particularly for suborbital missions. Unlike the massive Starship, which requires intricate ground support systems, Dream Chaser is compact and nimble, an ideal choice for time-sensitive missions. With its airplane-style lifting body design, it can land on any conventional runway worldwide. That means quicker access to cargo compared to SpaceX's Dragon, which splashes down in the ocean, or Boeing's Starliner, which often lands in remote locations. In short, Dream Chaser wins on time efficiency. Cost is another area where Dream Chaser shines. It's partially reusable, making it less expensive than fully expendable vehicles. Moreover, by using existing airport infrastructure rather than needing custom-built setups like Starship's Mechazilla, logistics become simpler and more economical. Critics point out that Dream Chaser's small size could be a drawback especially when compared to the cargo hauling capacity of larger spacecraft, like NASA's retired space shuttle. But Sierra Space has been laser focused on maximizing the vehicle's payload. It can carry up to 12,000 pounds, 5,500 kilograms of cargo, matching SpaceX's Cargo Dragon and exceeding NASA's commercial resupply services two requirements. Since day one, Sierra Space's goal has been to support critical scientific missions. That's why Dream Chaser is built to prioritize pressurized cargo. Thanks to the addition of the Shooting Star cargo module, its pressurized volume jumps to 33 cubic meters, almost four times that of Dragon. And let's not forget other standout features. Gentle runway landings, compatibility with multiple launch vehicles, due to its ability to fit inside existing rocket fairings and environmentally friendly, non-toxic propellants. That said, the biggest hurdle for Sierra Space right now is finding a reliable launch provider. As I've mentioned in several videos, depending solely on ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket limits their options. Naturally, SpaceX enters the conversation here, thanks to its frequent dependable launches. But there's a technical hitch. Dream Chaser just doesn't fit inside Falcon 9's fairing. Dream Chaser is about 30 feet, 9 meters long, and 15 feet, 4.5 meters, wide, because of its winged, lifting body shape. Meanwhile, Falcon 9's fairing offers an internal diameter of 17 feet, 5.2 meters, and a height of just 43 feet, 13.1 meters. Simply put, Dream Chaser needs a launch vehicle with a larger fairing volume, ruling Falcon 9 out for now. So, what's the solution moving forward? Back in January, a photo went viral on X showcasing Falcon Heavy's extended fairing. Now, while the standard Falcon Heavy uses the same fairing as Falcon 9, this new extended version is a game changer. It's significantly taller, reportedly measuring around 18.6 meters. 
61 feet, in height while keeping a similar diameter. This upgrade was driven by the need to accommodate larger payloads, like those destined for the Lunar Gateway or critical Department of Defense missions that simply won't fit inside the regular fairing. SpaceX billed the cost of this fairing development to the DoD under early NSSL Phase II contracts, which underscores how crucial it is for military use. One catch. Unlike the standard fairing, this one isn't designed to be recovered and reused. Its increased size and weight make recovery too complicated. That said, this opens a very real possibility for both SpaceX and Sierra Space to consider this extended fairing for Dream Chaser's upcoming Demo-1 mission. Now, let's talk about Falcon Heavy itself. This rocket is an absolute beast. It is widely recognized as one of the most powerful operational rockets in the world. The Falcon Heavy is essentially a beefed-up Falcon 9 at its core, flanked by two additional Falcon 9 first stages, used as strap-on boosters. The whole thing stands 70 meters tall, that's 229.6 feet, and has a total diameter of 12.2 meters, 39.9 feet. Fully fueled, it weighs in at a staggering 1,420,788 kilograms, or over 3.1 million pounds. It's powered by 27 Merlin 1D engines, nine on each of the three cores, producing a jaw-dropping 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. To put that in perspective, that's like launching 18 747 jets all at once at full throttle. Payload-wise, it's no slouch. Falcon Heavy can deliver 63,800 kilograms, 140,660 pounds, to low Earth orbit, 26,700 kilograms, 58,860 pounds, to geostationary transfer orbit, and 16,800 kilograms, 37,040 pounds, to Mars. What makes this powerhouse even more impressive is its reusability. Just like Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy's side boosters and center core are built to return and land vertically, cutting costs and boosting launch cadence. Nevertheless, in recent years, it is rumored that SpaceX has no longer attempted to recover the core stage, only recovering the side boosters. Landing the center core is a lot harder than landing the side boosters. While the two side boosters routinely land successfully on land, the center core lands on a drone ship far downrange facing rough sea conditions and logistical challenges. In reality, the center core only landed successfully once during Arabsat 6A mission on April 11, 2019. It was then lost during transport due to rough seas, causing it to tip over and sustain heavy damage. Additionally, recovering the center core requires more fuel for deceleration, which reduces the rocket's payload capacity. By not recovering the center core, Falcon Heavy can carry significantly heavier payloads. By not recovering the center core in combination with sheer muscle, Falcon Heavy is tailor-made for deploying large satellites, interplanetary missions, and complex government or commercial payloads. Perfectly positioned to handle the future, like launching the Dream Chaser. Anyway, if you love this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe and ring the bell, we're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more, and let's keep exploring the cosmos together. Dream Chaser's whole journey really kicked off back in 2014, when Sierra Nevada Corporation SNC lost a lawsuit against NASA. The lawsuit stems from the National Space Agency awarding its coveted crewed spaceflight contracts to SpaceX and Boeing, leaving SNC out in the cold. A big reason? SNC was banking on its innovative Dream Chaser space plane, a sleek, winged vehicle reminiscent of the space shuttle, while competitors stuck with the more conventional, flight-proven capsule design. But as they say, when one door closes, another opens. Fast forward to 2016, and SNC got a second chance. NASA selected Dream Chaser for its Commercial Resupply Services II contract. But there was a twist. While Dream Chaser was originally intended to carry astronauts, its debut mission would be an uncrewed cargo flight. 
Still, SNC hasn't shelved its crude ambitions. Right now, their top priority is getting the cargo version flight ready. Even with its shift in focus, the Dream Chaser is still cool, whether it's flying with a crew or carrying cargo. There's something truly special about seeing the spirit of NASA's iconic space shuttle reborn, this time in a sleeker, more advanced, and more dependable form. So, the question here, when will it launch? In 2020, Steve Lindsay, SNC's Vice President of Space Exploration Systems, was optimistic, announcing a 2021 target launch. But here we are, four years later, and Dream Chaser is still grounded. The first cargo model, aptly named Tenacity, is in its final testing phase at NASA facilities, and now aiming for a launch no earlier than quarter 3 2025. So what's been holding things up? The biggest culprit is launch logistics. Dream Chaser was supposed to ride on United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket, but ULA had to push back that launch plan to prioritize getting Vulcan certified for high-priority U.S. Space Force missions. That meant dummy payloads took the spotlight, while Dream Chaser's debut got benched. While there is a tentative launch slot for Tenacity in late 2025, everything remains uncertain. ULA is juggling a heavy backlog of military launches, pushing that 2025 timeline even further. SNC did have a backup. ULA's trusted Atlas V rocket, but relying on a single launch provider, especially one in transition, is risky. ULA officially stopped making the Atlas V in 2024, and with only 14 launches left to fulfill existing commitments, like Boeing Starliner and other government payloads, Dream Chaser's chances of hitching a ride on one are slim. With pressure mounting, it might be time for a hard reset. Look at Blue Origin. After years of delays on the new Glenn rocket, they swapped leadership in 2023. Dave Limp took over as CEO, and sure enough, new Glenn finally launched in early 2025. Now Sierra Space could be hoping for the same turnaround. At the end of 2024, longtime CEO Tom Weiss stepped down after leading since 2021 when the company spun out from SNC. Chairman Fadi Osman stepped in as interim CEO, while Aaron Osman became president. It's a pivotal moment, and one that could define Dream Chaser's future in space. If Sierra Space's tenacity successfully enters service, it could outshine Boeing's troubled CST-100 Starliner and stand alongside SpaceX's trusted Crew Dragon, not based on flight history, but on its promising future potential. While adopting the capsule design on Dragon, rooted in the Apollo era, allowed NASA to swiftly end its reliance on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft and enabled Dragon to enter service more quickly. It also places limitations on long-term capabilities. Dragon capsules splash down in the ocean, but Dream Chaser is built to glide back to Earth and land on traditional runways almost anywhere. That kind of airplane-like convenience means faster, gentler returns of cargo and experiments, reducing stress on fragile payloads. This makes Dream Chaser especially appealing for critical scientific research and time-sensitive missions.